Hi everyone, welcome to MDVOD, your health live and on demand here on EmpowerMe.TV. I'm Dr. John Kennedy and today we're taking a look at Alzheimer's disease, a progressive form of mental deterioration and the most common form of dementia. Alzheimer's disease impacts cognitive functions including memory, comprehension, thought processing and language. And in the final stages, it makes it difficult for people to even care for themselves. Of the 5.4 million Americans who have Alzheimer's disease, an estimated 4% are under the age of 65. 6% are between 65 and 74, 44% between 75 and 84, and 46% are over 85. The fact is we're living longer and this disease has grown, affecting one in eight Americans over the age of 65. This week we'll be joined by neurologist and Alzheimer's expert Dr. David Karadier to help us better understand what Alzheimer's is, how to live with it, and discuss the risks and symptoms as well as how to diagnose it and treatments and therapies. Finally, we'll talk about whether insurance covers some of the costs. But first, to help us better understand this disease, let's take a really good look at the anatomy of Alzheimer's. Hi everyone, welcome back to MDVOD, where today we're talking about Alzheimer's disease. It's important to know the anatomy for any disease, and, and on the left of your screen, notice normal brain tissue. And in particular, look at this area. That's called the hippocampus, or the memory area of our brain. On the right side, we see a brain that's been affected by Alzheimer's disease. And if you notice and compare to the normal brain, we see a much smaller hippocampus. That's the memory center. The reason it's smaller is because on a microscopic level, we form scar tissue known as neurofibrillary tangles. That's what causes deterioration of the memory center of the brain and why it's a rapid deterioration uh, or causes a rapid deterioration in our memory and cognition. That's the anatomy for Alzheimer's disease. Be sure to join us next when we're here with neurologist and Alzheimer's expert, Dr. David Karadier. We're back on MDVOD with Alzheimer's expert and board certified neurologist, Dr. David Karadier. Welcome, David. Hey, Thanks John. for joining us. Thanks for having me. How you doing? So, I'm great. Thanks. Uh, what, what is Alzheimer's disease? Well, Alzheimer's disease is the most common form of dementia. Uh, in the United States, as you've said in your intro, it affects over five million patients uh, a year. And as the baby boomer population is increasing, that number is going to rise as high as 12 to 16 million wow. by the year 2050. As we get older, we live longer, more of our family members and patients are going to be developing this condition. So as you know, it's the most common form of dementia. It affects short-term, greater than long-term memory loss. Mm -hmm. And most people think of it just as a memory problem, but it also affects behavior, it affects personality, mm -hmm. and a lot of day-to-day -day activities that we take for granted. Wow. So it's, it's, a, it's a disease of the memory mostly, um, but you're saying it affects other things as well. Um, that's great take-home advice. Um, Dr. Crudier, what, what things put us at risk for developing uh, Alzheimer's disease? The most common thing, obviously, is age. As we get older, the chances of developing Alzheimer's go up. Mm -hmm. I tell everybody, if you live long enough, you're going to get it. So um, as the ages go higher and higher, the risk of developing the dementia increase as well. Um, other things, uh, there are theories of high blood pressure, diabetes, obesity. There are certain genetic factors, APOE4 allele, things that we don't have control over that are also potential causes of developing dementia, um, but those are the more common ones that we think about. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, great advice. Um, what A question that I get often, and I, and, and I don't know the answer, and it's not because I don't remember, it's just that I don't know it. Um, patients often ask, hey, you know, my, my mother, my father had Alzheimer's disease. Does that mean that I'm at increased risk for getting it? Um, I would say the only time really that uh, someone is at risk of getting it is in the genetic forms, which are very uncommon. It's usually less mm. than 5%. Mm. And those forms of dementia tend to occur in patients who are between 40 and 50 years old. Mm. Usually, besides that, 
Um, I mean, anyone can get it, anyone, and most likely people will get it as they get a little bit older. So what we usually tell patients to do is, you know, just take care of yourself, don't do anything too crazy, take control of your health and exercise and mm -hmm. take care of yourself, and the chances of developing it earlier tend to be, in theory, later. Wow, I did not know that. That's, a, that's, that's really outstanding advice um, because I always thought you were at so much increased risk, but it sounds mm -hmm. like just aging is, is, is equally uh, uh, important for us to know about is with, with Alzheimer's. Um, yeah. Another question I have, um, because I do it all the time, uh, if I forget where I put my car keys and I can't remember you know, my, my password, um, does that mean that I'm, that I'm getting Alzheimer's disease? Is that a sign that I'm, that I'm headed towards Alzheimer's? No, that means you're getting old. <laughs> <laughs> no, but usually, I mean, what it is, you know, Alzheimer's disease, what it really is, it's a whole spectrum. I mean, there's not like, you don't go from being completely okay to all of a sudden developing full-blown dementia. We think of it more of a, of a spectrum condition where people will develop something called early aging, uh, then they go into a mild cognitive impairment, and then there are forms of Alzheimer's like mild, moderate, and severe. So because you set your keys down in the wrong place, forget your password, I mean those things could be early signs, but I mean that happens to people as well. But what I would say is if you notice that it's happening more often or more importantly if family members start noticing that mm. mom is slipping or dad is not knowing how to write checks or grandma's recipes mm -hmm. you know are not coming out the right way and you start to see the warning signs that's when it's probably a good time to you know go see your general doctor or neurologist and get worked up for it. Mm -hmm. So that's great advice um, you know it's not only, hey, am I forgetting more? It's happening more frequently. Frequently, it's it's what do your relatives and your loved ones, people that are close to you, uh, recognize? And if they recognize it, you know, see your doctor. That's a great, great point. Um, a lot of times, people internalize and personalize, and that's important to, to know. The people that are with you know the most about you, uh, and we should listen to them. Um, let's say someone comes to you uh, and says, you know, I'm worried about Alzheimer's. How would you make the diagnosis? Well, there is no way of really diagnosing a patient with Alzheimer's disease unless they pass away and they do an autopsy and a brain biopsy. Usually I don't recommend that to patients right away to do that. So what I usually will start by doing is to do a full general exam and a neurologic exam, including what we call the mini mental status exam. Mm -hmm. And that exam is a 30-point study mm -hmm. where we look for short-term memory, attention, concentration, you know, naming objects, drawing objects, putting sentences together, really looking at all the different parts of the brain. And what we're looking for is to screen. It's a pretty simple screening test for dementia. Mm -hmm. And after that, what I usually like to do and I usually recommend to patients is to get some sort of imaging of the brain like an MRI of the brain, mm -hmm. to look for things that you've mentioned in your opening, mm -hmm. such as atrophy, shrinking of the brain. And there's blood work that we look for to look for reversible causes of dementia. A lot of times people think they're, they have dementia, but they may have something as simple as an underactive thyroid, mm -hmm. vitamin B12 deficiency, blood sugars being too high or too low, even depression. There are other causes of memory problems that one would think may be Alzheimer's. And in fact, you find a different problem and you treat it and patients become a lot better. Mm -hmm. So that's a, another great take home point is that Alzheimer's disease uh, or memory or dementia can be for, from more than uh, Alzheimer's disease. There are reversible causes as Dr. Crodier uh, points out, thyroid disease, for example, and your blood sugar level. Um, you know, you also pointed out that the mini mental status exam um, is, is incredibly important to make the diagnosis, and that's all based on history. Um, do you need to go to a special type of doctor to get that information? I mean, I would say usually it's a good idea to see your general doctor first, maybe have them examine you, do a few of the screening tests, but I think mainly neurologists should be involved in terms of diagnosis and more so in terms of treatment and management of the conditions, what to look for, what are the medications we use now, what are the new medications, what's the new research, what's the hot topic. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of the research recently has been in the last 15 years has really exploded in terms of causes of Alzheimer's disease. And the more we learn, 
the more ideas we can get of medications and treatments to try to fix the condition. Oh, that's great, great advice. Um, you know, I, I'm worried, like many people are worried, we're this aging population and, um, you know, we're at risk. You just said it. As we age, we're at higher risk for developing dementia and Alzheimer's. Um, are there things that we can do, like crossword puzzles or reading more? Is there anything that, that can lower our risk of developing it? That's a great question, and I get that question asked a lot, and what I tell patients and their family members is, you know, your brain is like a muscle. The more you lift weights, the more you pump iron, your muscles get huge and you get strong, and your brain's the same way. So even though you can't develop more cells or more neurons, what you can do is you can develop more synapses, more connections in the brain. Mm -hmm. So I usually tell patients you want to keep your mind active, you want to keep your mind doing brain exercises like crossword puzzles, jumbles, word searches, Sudoku. I even tell family members, I'm like, give them three words, ask them the three words all the time during the day. Say, mom, what are the three words I asked you to remember? And if they don't punch you in the face and they know the words, that means they're doing pretty good. That's great advice. So three words remember all day, every day. Um, good advice. And crossword puzzles. That's actually, I've heard that and that's actually I true. can't do them, but I, you know, I, I ask patients to do them. How about reading books? Like it, it, it is, it, although it's nice to be able to do certain activities that will make you challenge yourself. Like, what was the word I'm looking for? Mm -hmm. What is the topic I'm looking for? So mm -hmm. I think the more exercise activities you can do, it's good. And I usually read a book and forget in a few minutes. So I don't know if that would be the best thing, but I'm sure it doesn't hurt. Okay, good, good advice. And, you know, treatments, um, you know, all the diagnostic tests, you mentioned MRI, um, you know, neurologist visits um, uh, and, and the mini mental status exam. Uh, you know, this, this can get expensive. Is, is there any way um, that you'd recommend that we could decrease cost as we age? That's a good question. Um, what I would usually recommend is, you know, you want to get treated early. You want to get um, diagnosed early. Even though we don't have cures yet for these conditions, the idea is the sooner that we can treat a patient, mm -hmm. the sooner we can prevent them from getting to the moderate and severe form. Mm -hmm. So that'll decrease the risk of hospitalizations, decrease the risk for home health nurses, decrease the risk of long-term care. Um, so I would say the sooner we can treat a patient, the sooner we can manage a patient, in theory that would decrease longer term uh, care that we would need. So prevention uh, is, is the key again. Um, if we can prevent it from happening and do things uh, to get diagnosed early, um, we can definitely decrease cost in the future. That's a, a great take home uh, point. Um, you know, there, there are pharmaceutical companies that um, have some assistance programs for patients that can't afford uh, to see a neurologist, for example. Mm -hmm. How would we go about learning more about that kind of opportunity? Well, the main medicines that we use right now are a class of medicines called cholinesterase inhibitors. And uh, the idea being that low, low levels of acetylcholine in the brain are a theory in terms of why people develop dementia. So a lot of the medications that are out target that, There's uh, such as Aricept, uh, Razadine, and Exelon. And then there's one in the NMDA antagonist group called Nemenda. So those mm -hmm. are the common medicines. All of those medicines are made by pharmaceutical companies that do have patient support, financial support. They're patients who, if they cannot afford their medications, they can help to get them medication. So there are a lot of different assistance groups out there that either patients can look up directly or with the help of their physician, they can be able to get that information. That's, that's great advice. So make sure that you, um, you know, search out information about pharmaceutical companies. Um, all the medications that you mentioned um, increase this chemical in our brain called acetylcholine, um, mm -hmm. all of the medications. Um, is there any side effects or common side effects that you see when patients are treated um, with medications for Alzheimer's? Well, I mean, like every medicine, there are side effects. It's just that we try to limit uh, the degree of side effects that they may develop. In other words, dizziness, lightheadedness, people can pass out what we call syncope. They can develop diarrhea. So usually we like to recommend starting at the smallest dose and slowly titrate them up and increase them to a dose where their body can handle it. And at the same time, we can hopefully see some sort of effective treatment. Wow, that's uh, outstanding advice. Um, I want to thank Dr. Karadier for being thank here. Thank you so much. I uh, appreciate We talked it. about the diagnosis, the treatment, and prevention of Alzheimer's disease. Make sure to join us next uh, when we talk about ways to prevent Alzheimer's on Apple a Day.
We're back with an apple a day and common sense tips that can help a newly diagnosed Alzheimer's patient deal with the news. Try to remember you're still you and the disease hasn't changed you at all. And there's no need to feel embarrassed because you are definitely not alone. Alzheimer's disease is one of the most commonly diagnosed forms of dementia in the United States. Try to look at the disease as something that affects your memory and thought. And finally, take time to enjoy life. Stop and smell the roses and be in the moment. Thank you very much for joining us and I hope you found this information about Alzheimer's disease helpful and will help better prepare you for discussions with your doctor, family, and friends. And remember to bring your questions to any medical appointment and if you forget, we can help. You can find us right here on your phone. This and other episodes you might have missed are available on demand at EmpowerMe.tv's website and the YouTube channel. So be sure to leave us your comments and questions so we can better help you understand your disease. I'm Dr. John Kennedy and you're watching MDVOD, your health live and on demand here on EmpowerMe.tv. And don't forget to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and share us with your family and friends. We'll see you next time on MDVOD.